So plywood is an excellent wood to use in the shop. Uh, it's a very stable wood. It's basically a bunch of thin pieces that are laminated together uh, with the grains running in different directions. Uh, this makes it stable, solid, and strong, and lightweight. Now, the other advantage of plywood is that it can come with different faces on it so that you can have oak, maple, um, walnut, whatever you're looking for, cherry. You can have a plywood that matches the hardwood that you may be using or the softwood that you may be using. Now, probably the biggest flaw to plywood is that if the ingrain is ever showing or the edges, uh, you can see the lamination there. And sometimes on the lamination, uh, you're going to have little gaps in there. So when you have ingrain showing, it doesn't quite look finished. So one of the ways that you can finish, and there are a number of ways you can finish this edge, but one of the ways that you can finish the edge is by using edge banding. And edge banding comes in the type of wood that you want to use on the end or on the edge of your plywood. And it also has a heat activated glue on the back. So right now, I'm going to show you how to put that on the plywood and make your plywood pieces look finished. Okay, so today I want to talk a little bit about edge banding. And for edge banding, we need edge banding material like this. But we're going to need a lot more than that. So let's, uh, let's, yeah, yeah, that's about the amount that we need. Now, because it's a heat activated glue, we need some way of adhering it to the edges. And for that, I actually went and purchased one of these. Just a regular house iron that uh, works just about perfect. Now, once it's glued down to the edges, we need to trim the sides flush with the edges. And for that, we use this edge trimmer here, which works perfect and trims both edges at the same time, which you'll see soon. Now, at the end, we have some overhang, and we cut that off using a pair of dikes. Now, with the ends cut and smooth, we need to basically smooth everything out and make it flush with the board. And for that, I like to use a sanding block with 100 grit sandpaper. Uh, now, some people like to file the ends down uh, using a, just a wood file. But basically, these are all the tools you need to get started in edge banding. The first thing I want to do is get started by sanding the edges of the wood. Now, especially when I have pieces that are glued together like this divider here that has four different pieces, I want to make sure that everything is flat and smooth for the edge banding to adhere to. And notice that I sort of beveled the edges a little bit just to get rid of any little uh, cutoff residue on the edges of the board. Then a quick wipe down with a cloth to get rid of all of the excess wood dust. And uh, now I'm ready for the edge banding material. Now it's sold in rolls like this as you saw in the last uh, clip. But I want to cut it to the proper length. And I add about maybe a half inch on each side. And just a simple pair of dikes cut the banding perfectly. Once it's laid down, uh, I line it up with the wood and I try to give the same amount of overhang on each side. That makes it easier for the trimmer to work. Uh, you can start at either end and I decided to start at this end. And from here I'm going to line it up, tack it down, and move the iron slowly as my hand in front aligns the edge banding with the shelf so that there's even overhang on both sides or at least as close as I can. Right there, I touch down to feel the heat to make sure that I get enough heat to make good adhesion. But I also don't want to have too much heat where it just melts everything and it takes a long time for it to stick down permanently. The iron is tilted slightly for my last round, which seals the edges. Now I'm going to cut off each end using a pair of dikes. And just a quick snip on each end gets rid of that. And then from there, I need to trim off the excess on both sides of the shelf. And for that, I use the edge banding trimmer. Squeezing this together, there are two blades on each side, which follow the edge parallel and make a nice even cut across the edge so that it's flat. Now, the cut is rather um, rough at this point, so I do want to sand it down a little bit. I'm using a 100 grit sandpaper on my sanding block on both sides and make sure that it's flat and parallel with the shelf and then round it over a little bit uh, just to give it a smooth feel. Now I'm going to do the same thing at each end uh, but I'm going to sand those flat and I see that one's coming up here a little bit so I'm going to put a little bit more heat to it to make sure that it's stuck down pretty good and while I'm at it I might as well tack the other one because most of the time it's going to come up at one end or the other. 
And so now I'm using my sanding block and I sand that till it's smooth and it lines up with the wood. And just roughly going over everything to make sure everything is smooth and looking good. Now at the end, because like I said, this is a glued up board, I want to make sure that the glue is really activated well on everything. So I'm going to make another quick little pass over it just to make sure that all the glue is stuck down well and everything uh, will not lift up in the future. So again, you see I'm taking my time to make sure I build up the heat, rock it a little bit more than I want to. But now I'm doing each edge and that makes sure that the glue is stuck well on all the edges where it's most likely uh, going to come up. Made a little adjustment on the iron there just to heat it up a little bit to make this thing a little quicker. Now for full length boards, um, you don't need as much sanding, nowhere near as much sanding, but I do want to still smooth it up a little bit to make sure that I get good glue adhesion to the edge. And then once sanding, I'm going to wipe it down with a cloth. This happens to be an old shirt of mine. And then I'm going to select my edge banding and place it across there. Now, edge banding comes in all different types of wood. Uh, this particular one is maple because I'm using a maple plywood. And a quick clip to the proper length. And again, I'm going to line it up across the edges there and use my left hand there to guide the strip in front of the iron. So I'm moving the iron slowly and making sure they have good glue adhesion over there and get to the end stop for a little bit just to make sure that's stuck down well and going back touching to make sure that i have enough heat there uh, you know if you can put your finger on it and have to move it after a little bit it's okay but you know you should be able to keep your finger down there uh, for somewhat of a time so that the banding is not too hot and the glue is not over liquefied because then it will stick here I'm going straight to the edge trimming because I don't have too much overhang on each side and you see how nicely this trimmer works it just goes right along the edge and cuts both sides at the same time so that they're parallel to the board now I'm going to clip off the overhang that I have on the end and again using my sanding block oh, this time I changed my mind and decided to use the file so I'm going to file the edge, oh, I'm filing the edge flat here because I do want to put edge banding on all four sides of this. So see how I'm keeping it nice and parallel with that edge so they get good glue adhesion on the next edge banding that I put on. After I got the edges sanded at a 90 degree, I'm going to go ahead and get each side, sand that down so it's smooth so it doesn't catch on anything and lift. And again, 100 grit sandpaper, just a sanding block, makes quick work of this. And I'm going to roll the edges over a little bit to make it smooth. And a final wipe down, and we're done.